So nobody can deny the impact that director Sergio Leone has had on westerns, breathing new life into the genre with five groundbreaking spaghetti westerns. And although each one of them is a classic in their own right, in this video I'll attempt the difficult task of ranking the top five best Sergio Leone westerns ever made. So let's get started. So at number 5, we have Duck You Sucker, also known as A Fistful of Dynamite, a 1971 spaghetti western war movie starring James Coburn and Rod Steiger. And the film is set during the Mexican Revolution, and follows an outlaw and a former soldier who join forces to become unlikely war heroes, overcoming their obvious differences and personal reservations to fight side by side in aid of the greater good. And as you might expect, the film delivers everything that you could want from a Leone western, including beautiful cinematography, tense moments, and lots of morally grey characters, all capped off by an excellent score from Ennio Morricone. But despite having all the hallmarks of a typical Leone western, this movie stands out for being a lot more political than his previous films, actively tackling hard-hitting socio-political themes around issues of oppression and class struggle. Now that's not to say that's a bad thing, as the film very much succeeds in what it's trying to be, delivering an epic, unflinching take on the brutality and senselessness of war, while still finding time for moments of levity, thanks in large part to the chemistry of its two leads. So really, there isn't all that much bad to say about Duck You Sucker, given that it is an excellent film, but given the quality and cultural impact of the four Leone westerns that preceded it, it's difficult to place this film much higher than fifth. Next, at number four, we have A Fistful of Dollars, a 1964 spaghetti western that famously starred a relatively unknown Clint Eastwood. And in the movie, he plays Joe, an elusive gunslinger who rides into a town torn apart by two rival gangs, who he decides to manipulate for his own personal gain. And from this simple concept, Sergio Leone crafted a cinematic masterpiece, full of unforgettable scenes, groundbreaking concepts, and a sense of style that inspired filmmakers for years to come. So there's no question that A Fistful of Dollars made a huge impact on pop culture, especially considering that it introduced the wider world to Clint Eastwood, Ennio Morricone, and the very concept of a spaghetti western. But just because it was the first of its kind doesn't necessarily mean it was the best, because judged against the films that followed it, it's clear that A Fistful of Dollars was merely a sample of what Leone was capable of, especially when you consider how much his ambition grew as a storyteller and a director in the years that followed. So as difficult as it is to be critical of this film, in a list full of classics, one of them has to rank fourth, if only because the remaining three somehow managed to find ways to improve upon perfection. So up next, we have For A Few Dollars More, a 1965 spaghetti western that was sold as a semi-official sequel to A Fistful of Dollars, bringing back Clint Eastwood, this time under the guise of Manco, alongside rival bounty hunter Colonel Douglas Mortimer, played by Lee Van Cleef. And in the film, the unlikely pair initially butt heads, before joining forces to capture a notorious outlaw, leading to lots of double crossing, high stakes, and a fateful showdown, as Mortimer's true motivations gradually become clear. And much like the first movie, For A Few Dollars More is full of Leone's distinct visual flair, as well as another star turn from Eastwood, and an equally memorable score from Ennio Morricone. So whether directly connected or not, For A Few Dollars More delivers pretty much everything that you could want from a sequel. But what takes the film to a higher level is the casting of Lee Van Cleef, who somehow manages to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eastwood in terms of screen presence, resulting in a great chemistry between the pair that makes both of their characters feel a whole lot more interesting. On top of this, the introduction of Mortimer and his personal stakes give for a few dollars more an emotional resonance and payoff that A Fistful of Dollars never really had time for. So already, in the space of just one movie in a single year, it's clear to see how Leone was developing as a filmmaker, somehow topping his western debut with a movie that delivered just as much, but with a few improvements that we didn't necessarily know we needed. 
So at number two, by the smallest of margins, is Once Upon a Time in the West, a 1968 spaghetti western featuring an ensemble cast that included Henry Fonda and Charles Bronson. And the film follows a mysterious harmonica-playing sharpshooter, a notorious outlaw, and a strong-willed widow, who join forces to fight back against a ruthless enforcer working on behalf of a greedy tycoon. Now, with this being Leone's fourth spaghetti western, it's no surprise that Once Upon a Time in the West features all of his well-established trademarks, including his distinct visual style and morally grey anti-heroes, topped off by yet another incredible score from Ennio Morricone. But what truly sets this film apart from the previous entries is its sheer sense of scale, from its production design to its narrative truly capturing the vastness of the American West without ever losing sight of its story and characters. And for that reason, Once Upon a Time in the West actually makes Leone's previous westerns look somewhat tame and small-scale in comparison. But the truth is that this fourth movie is really a culmination of everything that had come before, and the product of a seasoned auteur who at this stage had clearly mastered his craft. In fact, in many ways, Once Upon a Time in the West very much feels like Sergio Leone's love letter to the genre that helped make him famous. So I don't think it would be unfair to call Once Upon a Time in the West his magnum opus. Yet at the same time, it's hard to deny that it's a film that feels forever in the shadow of the movie that directly preceded it. So as you've likely guessed, at number one, we have The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, a 1966 spaghetti western that starred Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef and Eli Wallach. And in the film, they make up a trio of morally questionable characters who become embroiled in a race against time to be the first to uncover buried gold, while the civil war rages all around them. So much like For A Few Dollars More, this third film in the Dollars trilogy more than delivered on everything that fans of Leone had become accustomed to, yet somehow raised the bar once again with the introduction of new characters, more hard-hitting themes, and a massive leap in scale and scope due to a vastly increased budget. But without question, the most significant improvement upon the previous films was the addition of Eli Wallach as Tuco, who absolutely steals the show from start to finish adding a heavy dose of comedy and humanity that made the film feel far more accessible, even to those who don't typically like westerns. And this leads on to perhaps the most impressive thing about the film, in that no matter how much time passes, the good, the bad and the ugly always feels timeless and iconic, showcasing a level of cinematic artistry that has inspired filmmakers for years to come, and left a lasting impact on pop culture. So as brilliant as his previous films are, for me, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly has to take the top spot as the best Sergio Leone western of all time, given that it's one of those rare movies that manages to transcend its genre, as a film that still captivates people even now, over 57 years after its release. But let me know in the comments below, what are your top five Sergio Leone westerns? And while you're here, you might also wanna check out this video right here.